So welcome to chapter 13, Accounting for Limited Liability Companies or Limited Companies. All along we've been calculating um, the financial statements of, or preparing the financial statements of a sole trader. What is the difference between a sole trader and a limited li liability company? There are key factors. One is that a limited liability company is a legal entity of its own. That means it can be sued and it can sue. Um, limited liability company is owned by shareholders, so people contribute money by buying shares. Uh, whereas in one man's business, the person in injects money, and we call it capital. So rather than calling it capital for limited liability company, we call it equity. So equity shares is the amount contributed. That's the same thing. And limited liability company, the people that run the business is separate from the owners. So we have directors. So people that give the company direction. Um, so the shareholders are covered. The, their liability is limited to the amount they owe the company. There are more formal requirements for limited liability com company in terms of disclosures of um, what the company is into or how the accounts are prepared, and it's expected that they are also being audited at least once a year. So what's the layout? There's a standard layout. You can read through the notes. And the standard layout, let's start with profits and loss accounts. Please practice this layout without the numbers. In your 10 mark multi-tax question, it can come from the sole trader's account or from a limited liability company. So it's very important. So have revenue, less cost of sales, will have gross profits. Bring in other incomes, like rents, probably have rental income coming in, or other investments, or even dividend receipts, or interest receipts. So bring them in, then less distribution costs, admin expenses, you have profit from operations, 27,000 is profit from operations, from that, you deduct interest. You have profit before tax. You take out tax and you have your profit for the year. Very simple format. We move to the statement of financial position where we have the asset section. Asset section, we have non-current assets, property, plants, and equipment, motor vehicle, total it on one side. Current assets, inventory receivables, prepayments, cash. If you add them up, you have total assets. So see the interesting bit now, we have equity and liabilities. So under equity and liabilities, we have share capital. So the share capital will be, I'll show you how to calculate that. It will be the par value of each share multiplied by the number of shares. So $50,000. Capital reserves, revenue reserves, non-current liability, 10% long notes, current liabilities, trade and other payables, company tax, short-term borrowings, and that will give us total equity and liabilities. It's expected, just like the sole trader, that the total assets, 135,000, should equal the total liabilities. All right. You can read that up and try the example. So what about dividends? The way um, ordinary shareholders get their part of their investment is through dividends. So directors of the company will propose dividends to shareholders. So and these dividends will depend on number of profits that is made. And then the shareholders are expected to vote at the annual general meeting. You can read up all that, but I'm interested in how dividends are being recorded. During the year, you see before the year ends, um, directors, shareholders don't need to wait until the whole year will end before they get their dividends. So directors will pay out something little. It's called interim dividend. And um, 
that interim dividend is what comes into the account because the proposed or final dividend hasn't been paid yet. It won't come into the account um, until next period. And so the dividend actually goes into statement of changes in equity. It's an adjustment to statement of equity. So example one, you see example two, a company has a year end of 31st December each year. During the year ended 31st December 2017, the following occurred. On 1st March 2017, they paid a final dividend for the year ended 31st December 2016. So probably they proposed this dividend. It wasn't in the books, but as at the time they paid, it will come into 2017 accounts. And on 5th July, they paid an interim dividend. That will also be in the account. But the last bit, 31st December, they proposed a final dividend. That will not come into the account, please. There are some examples at the back of your notes. You can just see how that pans out. So reserves, <coughs> next. So anything owing to the shareholders in addition to their share capital is reserved. So that's why reserves is a portion of our equity. So when we have um, profits, so revenue reserves, we have profits. It is not every profit that will be distributable by way of dividend. So whatever is left in the business, whatever is plowed back into the business is known as revenue reserve. So we also have capital reserves. For example, um, say revaluation of assets. If you push an asset upwards, it will give rise to a revaluation gain. That gain is not distributable. Um, according to section 610, subsection, sub, sub, subsection 10 of the Companies Act 2009, it is not distributable. Also, when you sell shares, um, for example, right issue, we we'll see that in subsequent, uh, in the next section. So when a company has share capital, at some point in time, they might decide to increase it and issue rights and make a right issue. That right issue will be to existing shareholders and at normally a, a reduced rate, but however, it will be higher than the par value, the nominal value. So the excess is profit. That profit will not be recorded, will not be distributed. It will be recorded in a capital reserve known as share premium. So we move then to the shares accounts. I think the whole idea I've explained that. So we have a share premium account which cannot be distributed. So example three then, a company is formed on January 1st, formed a new baby on January 1st, 2015, and issues $10,000, $0.5 shares at a price of $0.5 each. Show the necessary entries to record this transaction and what will appear in the statement of financial position under the heading equity. So let's see the necessary entry first. The company issued 10,000 shares at $0.5. So 0 0.5 multiplied by this example 3, multiplied by 10,000 shares, that should give us $5,000. How do we record this? We will debit, shareholders have paid in money. So we we'll debit cash or bank. with 5,000. Accounting is always debits and credit. And we will credit share capital, 5,000. So that's the accounting entry. How will it appear in the statement of financial position? Under the heading equity, just drop that share capital, 5,000. Part B, the same 
company issued more shares. So after some years, after two years, or a year and six months, two years and six months, the company issued another 200,000 shares, another 20,000 shares at $0.5. That's the nominal value, but they issued it at a price of 0 0.8 each. So what do we do then? So part B, part B, more shares, I'll call that right issue. 20,000 shares at 0 0.85, 0 0.85 dollars will be 17,000 dollars. <throat> this 17,000 dollars will be split into two. The share capital, which is the nominal value, which is the gain. Share capital, remember, it is 0 0.5. Share capital must always be at normal, nominal value. Any assets, you create a share premium account. So 0 0.5 times 20,000. And that would be $10,000 that will go in there. In the share premium, it will be 0 0.35. Remember, it was issued at 0 0.8. OK, so 0 0.3 times 20,000 shares. I did 0.35, so 0 0.3 should be 6,000. That means <coughs> we change this to 0 0.8, not 8,5. So 16,000. Let's make that new time. Sixteen thousand. So that's how we split it: ten thousand to share capital, ten thousand to share premium. How would that look in your statement of financial position? So statement of financial position under equity. We we'll have share capital. How much should go into share capital? Remember, we had an amount there before. We had $5,000. Figures that go into position statement. I keep repeating this. They are running totals. Please don't forget. So it will be 5000 plus 10000 We now have $15,000. However, it is not complete, so we need to create a share premium. We need to bring in our share premium account. And that's 6,000. So that's how to record it. So write issues with bonus issues. Now, right issues are given to existing shareholders to reward them for their loyalty, um, for investing in the business. And like I said, it will be given to them at a value higher than the power value. That shows the companies in business. Of course, they raise right issues for many reasons. One of them is to raise capital. However, to reward those shareholders, it will be at a lower market value. So if the market value, if what you buy that share in the capital market is say five dollars, they will give it to their shareholders for four dollars. However, it will be above the power value. So let's say that the power value is one dollar. And this difference, one dollar minus four dollars, the, the four dollars minus one dollar, the three dollars excess goes to share premium account. Now to have too much funds in the business is not also good. So one of the ways directors can reduce cash in the business 
is by giving bonus issue. And bonus issue is creating more shares without cash. Bonus is free. So where will we record the cash from? It will be from the share premium account. So let's see an example to illustrate what I've just explained. At 31st December 2004, a company's capital structure was as follows. Ordinary share capital is 500,000 shares at 25 cents each. Always watch the par value what it is. Because that is what will give you understanding of the share capital. This question gave us the share capital. So if you multiply 0 0.25 by $500,000, you will get 125000 The share premium account is $100,000. During the year, to 31st December 2005, the company made a right issue of one share for every two shares held at par, at $1 per share. And it was taken up in full. Before we continue, let's pause and treat that first. So one share for every two held. How many shares did, did we have? 500 shares. So the right issue would be like this. That's example four. Right issue and bonus issue. So for the right issues, we have one new share, 500,000 shares. So we have one new share for every two old shares, multiplied by the total number of shares, 500,000. And the amount was $1. So that will give us cash of 250,000. Two divided by 500, 250,000. So we have 250,000 new shares. At $1, 250000 How do we record this 250000 It must be at par. What goes into share capital must be at par. And the par value is 0 0.25. 0 0.25 times 250,000 shares. That is 62,500. And the SS goes to share premium, 0 0.25 minus one is 0 0.75, multiplied by 250,000 shares. And that is 187,500. So it's, what do we have in our share capital and premium account? We have balance. Let me just write balance. So balance on the share capital account. Share capital is, formerly we had 125,000. 125,000 plus 62,500. So we have 187,500. Now, in the share premium account, formerly we had 100,000. Now we have 187,500. You will see question like this in the exam. So we now have 287,500 shares. What now happened? So let's go back to our notes. Then we can continue. Later in the year, the company made a bonus issue of one share for every five held, using the share premium account for this purpose. I told you, when you make when a company makes bonus issue, it is the it is from the share premium account. What will be the balances on the share capital and share premium account as of that first December? So they made one for five. One for five. Let's find out. So bonus issue then will be one new share 
over divide by five old shares. How many shares do we have as at the date of bonus issue? 500,000 initially plus 250,000 right issue will give us a total of 750,000 shares. So the bonus issue is 150. So if we are to deduct this 150 from the share premium account, at what rate? It must be at par, please. Deductions is at par. So let's do that calculation. It is one, 0 0.25 times 150,000. That's the power value. So the cost of the bonus issue is 37,500. So what will be the balances on the on both? On the share capital, we have 187,500. That won't change. So share capital balances The share capital accounts, where more shares are coming in. So we have 187,500 plus 37,500. That's a total of 225,000. The deduction was made from the, so we debit share premium and credit share capital. Share premium is a credit to reduce it with debit. So the share premium account balance was 287,500. So 287,500 minus 37. Valuation reserve is next. We've explained the valuation enough and practice. Ask questions where you have doubts and we'll be able to clarify together. So, so far we've been referring to shares and those shares are called ordinary shares. However, there's another form of shares which is known as preference shares. And preference shares is where investors probably have a document saying that they have shares in the company but they're entitled to um, a fixed amount of dividend. They don't have rights like ordinary shareholders, so they are not allowed to vote. They don't attend the annual general meetings, but they make their fixed um, dividend, fixed interest, right, other than unlike the shareholders, the ordinary shareholders, that they are the director's messes. And even on preference shares, we have cumulative and normal preference shares. So preference shares will be paid interest before ordinary shareholders. It's what is left that is given to ordinary shareholders. However, in the days of losses, preference shareholders will endure. But cumulative preference shareholders, even in the days of losses, they are, their percentages accumulate. So they pay them regardless. So a company has an issue 10,000 5% preference shares of $1 each. The dividend is payable half yearly. 5% of 10,000 
is 500. It's 500. That's the interest. So half yearly, we are expected to pay um, 250 every six months. So preferred shareholders could either be redeemable or irredeemable. Irredeemable preferred shares means the capital, the the capital, the actual amount that was invested will never be paid back. Whereas redeemable means that at a certain date in the future, they will get back their money. So the, for the redeemable preferred shares, because they've given us an amount and we are paying them interest for a certain number of period, anytime in future where we will um, redeem that money, where they will redeem the money, so we are paying back the money. It's same as a loan. It's, it's just a loan. However, irredeemable preferred shares are like ordinary shares, but we don't add them to ordinary shares. We just keep them separately under the heading capital. So statement of comprehensive income, what does this mean? After we prepared our statement of financial of performance, statement of profit and loss for the year, so we have profit for the year. There are some comprehensive income, that's income that is not as a result of trading or income that is not realized. For example, revaluation surplus. We just bring that in and total it. That's the difference between performance and um, statement of comprehensive income. How about statement of changes in equity? This is where we report the changes that as it affects the shareholders. It's actually a shareholder statement. Statement of changes in equity. Equity belongs to shareholders. So three basic, um, five basic headings, but for the purpose of your exam, one is excluded, which is the non-controlling interest. However, for the purpose of your exam, you just have share capital, share premium, a column for share capital, share premium, revaluation reserve, retained earnings, and total. If you know this format, you can answer any questions on changes in equity. So you bring your opening balances as you have in the question. If there's any revaluation surplus, you put it on that column and you put it on the total column. Net profit for the period, you calculated it. So assuming you calculated it and it was wrong, it were wrong, the examiner will penalize you there. But if you bring the wrong value here, you get your full marks. And then dividend, this is where dividend comes in. Dividend paid, dividend received, and you close up your accounts. And that concludes chapter 13. Thank you.